very much. Coming up, Mike Nightfog, recommended by an ethics panel for disbarment. The Durham DA said he was still hanging around. And Dave, the prison is making special arrangements. It's something they've had to deal with lately after other high-profile murders involving young people, namely the David Ludwig and Jesse Wise cases. News Carry Carrie Fairchild has more. Right now, Alec Kreider is locked up in this part of the prison. He's in a cell in the medical housing unit where corrections officers can keep a constant eye on him. We need to uh, make sure that uh, he is uh, stabilized, I guess you could say, mentally able to accept the fact that he's now incarcerated and be able to deal with the days ahead, which can get rougher and rougher. Warden Vince Carini says Kreider is going through the intake process, basically a lot of questions and observation, all while the 16-year-old is constantly handcuffed. So we get to know him, that is, that is procedure. He would be uh, at least handcuffed. Kreider is not allowed television. His meals are brought to him, and while he will be able to talk with counselors, he'll first have to make it through several days of paperwork. Question is, how is the quiet 16-year-old handling it? So far, very quiet. In about a week, Alec Kreider will get his own cell in the protective custody unit. That's away from other prisoners. Warden Garini has experience housing young accused killers in high-profile cases. It has been, uh, you know, three in a row. A year and a half ago, 18-year-old David Ludwig was locked up for killing his girlfriend's parents. Then last year, 21-year-old Jesse Wise for the murders of six family members. Wise was just sentenced last Friday. He's still here getting ready to go out, and in all likelihood, you know, unfortunately, Mr. Kreider will probably occupy that cell as soon as he leaves. It's a trend Warden Greeny hopes ends, but he does not think it'll be that simple. It, it is me. disturbing because it just shows a general tendency of, uh, I guess you could say, of lack of uh, value of life sometimes. Basically, uh, hope that we don't have too many more. At Lancaster County Prison, Carrie Fairchild, News 8. The warden says Alec Kreider will have the option of continuing his high school education, but teachers will have to come to his cell. As for visitors, his attorney decides who can see him. Now to international news. The Bush administration has announced it's giving tens of millions of dollars in U.S. aid to the West Bank and the moderate Palestinian government there. Well, Schwarzenegger in California, who to all intents and purposes is an independent in many respects. you got Chuck Hagel, the anti-war Republican, who is in many respects an independent, not a Republican anymore. you got Al Gore, who inhabits his own universe. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And there who is, is by, the way, by the way, who's become very close to, to, uh, to Bloomberg. I was just talking to one of Al Gore's advisors and said, you know, Gore thinks a lot of Bloomberg, thinks he has a lot of good ideas on the environment. You've got all these loose atoms out there who are informally bonded together. Well, I mean, yeah, Bloomberg, I love Schwarzenegger, I love Hegel, you know why I love Gore. This. You know why I love this, Howard? For the same reason most people who are in journalism or most people who are independent hate the party system. But here you go again. Look, Chuck, the reason most people don't like the political parties is you got to join up and eat the full plate, the blue plate special. <laughs> right. If you're a Democrat, you got to be against free trade. you got to be against balancing the budget. you got to be for you every sort of sexual you adventurism out there. you got to be for everything brand new that's cool. If you're a Republican, you got to support the war. you got to support big corporations. So where do you find a place where your heart and your mind and your soul and your pocketbook are happy. Most people are not happy in either party because you got to buy the whole thing, right? right? But the minute Mike Bloomberg runs and says, I've got a new thing, he puts together an agenda, he puts together a party platform, then you got to buy his whole thing. Isn't it just creating a third party when we already have two we're not too happy with? Chuck, well, I think that's right, and I look, and I think the other oh, thing you mean is... I'm right. I, no, I mean, that's yes. a profound thought. Well, I'm, I'm, right. I'm either right or I'm wrong here. I mean, no, I, I, I think you're right, and I think the problem that Bloomberg has is that he's going to have to adopt one of the parties at the end of the day. He's going to have to say, look, I'm a, I'm a new kind of Democrat or I'm a new kind of Republican, right. and uh, I'll tell you, Bloomberg goal if I were Bloomberg, and, and he's going to be serious about this, you know, the bigger problem he's going to have is in, a, in an actual three-way race, the advantage goes to the Democrats. Their base is oh, more committed completely. to them. They could sweep the South. Right? You know, the reason Clinton picked Gore I in 92 agree. was a Southern strategy. So the Clintons race. luck out again. Can you imagine? That Bill this and Hill <laughs> do it again.
classes together and even a part of the same activity. It's also interesting to note that police say after the murders, Alec continued going to school and he even attended at least one of those memorial services held for the family. So uh, they've got uh, someone in jail, but they don't know the motive or they're not releasing it. Uh, the murder, I'm sorry, the murder they, weapon? They, there's no motive. There's so far, no motive uh, released to us. No motive at all. Police just aren't releasing any motive at this point, whether they know it or not. They're being hush-hush about it. Well, at least there's good news because I know the neighborhood the, the neighborhood was terrified that there was a killer on the loose. Anyway, assuming that this is indeed the killer. Um, Denise, thank you. Thank you very much. Coming up, Mike Nightfog, recommended by an ethics panel. Would you have any problem or anything to say if President Bush were to pardon Scooter Libby? <laughs> oh, I think there would be enough to be said about that without me adding to it. Is that, that is such a political answer. Uh, that is such a political answer. Would you have a problem with Scooter Libby getting a pardon, getting to walk after being convicted of perjury and obstruction? Okay. Like a, a question that's really about the people in this audience okay. and not what goes on inside of Washington. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that as a non-answer. Well, that was Hillary Clinton, Howard, uh, refusing to answer a question politically. Is that because both answers would have been trouble for her? Pardon him, uh, let him go. That's odd for a Democratic, to be, Democratic candidate to be saying that about someone so much involved in this war policy. And if she said... Uh, uh, basically, let him hang, and then she would be saying, let him go to jail for something my husband was accused of, impeached for, but didn't actually have to pay the price sure. for it. And, and she was proud of not answering it. Yeah. She was crowing about not answering okay, it. Okay, rub it in, Howard. And, and, no, no, I'm not blaming you, because she was pl playing the audience. She was showing what an adept micro politician she could be, Joe playing Tate to that Jim audience. Attorney. But she didn't answer the question. And she's going to get it yeah, again. Yeah, when he got sentenced. Uh, and she'll probably try to finesse it again the same way. She's That was a confident, if not cocky, candidate there Okay, today. so I lost that round. Let me ask you, Chuck Todd, why is Hillary, if Howard's right, so confident in giving a non-answer to a question, which is on basically the minds of a lot of people who cover national politics? Well, she did it, you know, she did, she did this at the last at that CNN debate. She took, when she didn't like the question that was being asked, she basically uh, lambasted the moderator. So she pulled the same trick. I think that this is going to be her way of trying to avoid some of these questions. But frankly, the non-answer on Scooter, which for this crowd, it should have been a fairly easy answer. Um, you know, that would have really put it this way, a non-answer on Scooter in front of the Take Back America crowd, which is the more liberal, much more anti-war crowd, uh, would have been a big problem. I I I'm surprised that she didn't just try to answer it and just say, yeah, don't pardon them. Mark? Ryder broke into the family's home in Mannheim Township May 12, intending to smother his friend, Kevin Haynes. Instead, police say Kreider stabbed Kevin and his parents, Thomas and Lisa. Kreider was arrested after police say he confessed to his father. So far, no word on a motive. The deaths of six people at an auto show in Selmer. And one last appeal to the public. This young man has now been locked up for murder, and if anyone may have information that will help us in processing this case. We ask people to call us at 569-6401. And with that, I introduce Major McDaniel from the Pennsylvania State Police. Thank you very much, Chief. I just want to assure the uh, residents of Mannheim Township and Lancaster County in particular that the community of law enforcement that serves you is among the, the most highly trained and committed and focused professionals available to you. And as you see, there is a, a, a wealth of law enforcement experience here that was brought to bear in this case. We wish to extend our concerns and condolences to the family, but we do want to, after the Chief's words, that all the citizens should exercise great caution, as you would at any particular time. Your personal safety is our number one concern, and we ask you to continue to be diligent in ensuring your own personal safety by hearkening the Chief's words. But also know that the community of law enforcement is here to serve you and will continue to serve you diligently through the future. Thank you, Major. Mr. Donald Zotero, the Lancaster County District Attorney. <laughs> Good afternoon. On uh, May 12 of 2007, Tom Lee and Kevin Haynes were brutally murdered in their Manhattan Township home. And uh, 
course, as has been indicated, uh, that crime not only had a significant impact in Manham Township, but all of Lancaster County. Over the past five weeks, uh, we have seen an extensive investigation being conducted by law enforcement officers from all of Lancaster County, not only county detectives, but primarily Manham Township Police and the Pennsylvania State Police uh, with other agencies as well. Uh, they have been committed days, evenings, weekends since the day this incident occurred to working tirelessly to find out who did this. As a result of the investigation, as indicated by the chief, uh, defendant Alec Kreider has been arrested and charged with three counts of criminal homicide and one count of burglary. Under the law in Pennsylvania, even though the defendant was 16 years of age at the time this crime was committed, he is charged as an adult and he will be prosecuted as an adult. The evidence in this case will establish that this was an intentional, premeditated, deliberate killing. This was not a random act. And the Commonwealth will be seeking a conviction of first degree murder in this particular case. That carries with it an automatic sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. I would like to conclude my remarks just by again commending the law enforcement officers that you see here yes. today as well as the others who are not well, here but who worked very hard during the course of this investigation He's the state police ma'am yes. township police yes. and others yes. and I, I think it's also important uh, to uh, acknowledge the significant assistance that was provided by the parents of the defendant in this case uh, and Mr. Byer, uh, Robert Byer, Lancaster attorney, is present uh, on behalf of the parents. He represents them. I understand he will have a few remarks uh, to the news media as well before we answer a few questions. But again, it's important for us to emphasize, as the chief did, the prosecution stage begins today. And so therefore, uh, because even though an arrest has been made, this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, there are additional inter interviews to be conducted. We are and must be very uh, limited in some of the answers that we provide. While we will try to answer some of your questions, there will be some, no doubt, that we will not be able to answer. Uh, Chief, I don't know if you want Mr. Byer at this point. Did you want to say anything? Just briefly. Mr. Craig Stevens, Assistant District Attorney. Uh -huh. just wanted to, uh, to say that um, for all of our remarks at this point in time, the defendant is still presumed Funny innocent. Um, obviously, the Haynes family has our thoughts, our prayers, and our condolences. Uh, as Mr. Tataro stated, uh, we want to express our sympathy with Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Kreider in this uh, what, what must be an extremely difficult time uh, for them, and, and they have our sincere thanks. Um, I, too, just want to emphasize uh, how lucky we are here in Lancaster County to have the law enforcement officials that are here and many of the members of this investigation that, that are not here right now, but I saw them firsthand uh, make tremendous sacrifices in their lives dedicating themselves uh, to this case day in and day out and working together. Uh, we're extremely fortunate to have uh, county detectives, state, state police uh, officers, and the Manheim Township Police Department, led by the chief in this case, uh, who, who came together as a team and, and we're standing here today in part uh, as, a, as a result of, of their work. Um, chief, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Byer, would you like to say Gentlemen, thank you. Um, I'm here today on behalf of the Kreider family. I'm authorized to tell this you that uh, Alec is going to be represented in his defense by attorney Jack Kneff from Lancaster County. Uh, my presence is here on behalf of the family. Uh, and the family will not be making any comments or offering any comments uh, regarding the most recent developments in this ongoing tragedy. Uh, they are a private family. They are a family with other children. And uh, it is their request, and I certainly hope treaty. that you will honor the request, that they not be uh, contacted in any way, either at their homes or by telephone or at their residences or at their places of work. I am uh, asked by them to make two statements, one of which, of course, is the obvious that the Hayes family remains and will continue to remain in the forefront of their thoughts and in their prayers. And also they would like me to convey uh, their appreciation to the consideration and the compassion that has been shown to them by the members of law enforcement 
particularly over the last 48 hours, and specifically to the Mannheim Township Police and Lead Detective Alan Lead, uh, also to the State Police and Corporal Pat Quigley, as well as to Mr. Tatera and Mr. Stedman from the Lancaster County Office of the District Attorney. So as I leave, I will again thank you in advance for your anticipated cooperation in allowing the uh, Criders to enjoy their privacy from this point forward. Thank you very much. We will take a few questions. I please be cognizant of the fact that uh, this investigation is really just beginning for the successful prosecution part of this case. Yes. Chief, was Al Kreider a suspect before he reportedly confessed to his father and had he recovered very well? Well, uh, he was certainly someone who had been looked at and inter interviewed by the police. Uh, as far as evidence in this case, uh, we have no comment other than to say, at this point in time, other than to say that physical evidence has been recovered and has been sent to the Pennsylvania State Police Crime Laboratory. We do not yet have results. So what is the here? We, we have no comment today on motive. What was the relationship between Alec and the family, if any relationship? There was a friendship between Alec and Kevin. How long have they been friends for? That I don't know. We don't, I don't have that information right now. Do I understand this right? I'm just reading the affidavit that the father did wait two days before contacting the police. We, the police were notified uh, two days after uh, the father discovered this information. That is correct. Can you comment on what he stole or intended to steal or what aspect of this? Well, I, I think if you, I don't know if you have the, the complaint of the affidavit, uh, the intent was to commit a homicide within the residence. No, that's not what we're saying. Uh, we're not saying that he broke in with the intent to steal. He broke in with the intent to kill. Yes. Well, that, that's the question that we're not going to answer right now. Did, did Alec confess uh, to detectives? We, we can't comment on that. How did the school assist? The school has been uh, a tremendous assistance, as I'm sure the chief will tell you throughout this investigation. The school helped us with information that we needed. And we're continuing to follow this live breaking news conference out of Mannheim Township, Lancaster County tonight. We will remind you that coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll have uh, more from that scene, more from that news conference. Reporter Eva Roman will be there. Just to wrap things up to tell you what we've heard here now. In this investigation into the murder of the three members of the Haynes family, the suspect is listed on your screen. Alec Kreider, a 16-year-old Mannheim Township resident. We are told by police that he attends Mannheim Township High School. He has been charged with three counts of criminal homicide as well as one charge of uh, one count of burglary for the deaths of Damn Tom mother, Haynes, Lisa father, Haynes, and Kevin Haynes back on that, May 12th of this year. Those three individuals were found killed, stabbed to death inside their home on Peach Lane in Mannheim Township. There was no sign of forced entry. And although police are saying that Alec Kreider has been charged, they are not offering much information as to uh, a motive uh, today. They are only saying, as far as any details, that Alec Kreider had a friendship with 16-year-old Kevin Haynes, the youngest murder victim in the case. Now, again, uh, Alec Kreider, 16 years old, he is the suspect who has been arrested and is being held in Lancaster County Prison tonight. He is being charged as an adult. The District Attorney of Lancaster County, Don Totero, said that he will be prosecuted as an adult. Now that they have identified the suspect, 16-year-old Alec Kreider, they will move on now to phase two of this uh, homicide investigation uh, where they're uh, going to prosecute him, and he says that he will, uh, he will prosecute him and seek the harshest penalty for first-degree murder. We are uh, also told tonight by the district attorney that this was not a random act, that residents around Mannheim Township uh, who, who are concerned about this being a random act, that the Haynes family may have been murdered by someone who was inside for uh, a random burglary and then they were killed. He said that is not the case. He, he went on to say that this was a premeditated crime, that, uh, again, Alec Kreider, the suspect, a 16-year-old, uh, was friends with the youngest victim, 16-year-old Kevin Haynes. Uh, we'll have more coming up at 6 o'clock tonight. Thank you for this, uh, for sticking with us during this breaking news report. We'll take a break, back to regular programming, and then join us tonight at 6 o'clock for the latest. Thank you. Big story in Lancaster County. Police in Mannheim Township have made an arrest 
in the murders of Tom, Lisa, and Kevin Haynes. All three were stabbed to death inside their home on Peach Lane in Mannheim Township just a little more than a month ago on May 12th. The couple's daughter survived. This afternoon, police announced they have arrested 16-year-old Alec Kreider. He's charged with three counts of criminal homicide and one count of burglary. He will be charged as an adult. Kreider is a student at Mannheim Township High School. He's being held at the Lancaster County Prison without bail. Lancaster County District Attorney Don Totero says the murders were not a random act. He says it was a premeditated crime. We have team coverage of the arrest and we'll bring you a live report on News 8 at 6 following the conclusion of the U.S. Open. We also have the press conference in its entirety on our website, WGAL.com. We return you now to the U.S. Open. Best ball striking rounds in U.S. Open history. What I like about of News 8 at 6, our top story tonight, police have made an arrest in the murders of three members of the Haynes family in Manheim Township, Lancaster County. News 8's Amy Sudowitz attended this evening's press conference and joins us now live from the Mannheim Township Police Department with the details. Amy? Caitlin, police have a 16-year-old from Mannheim Township in custody who they say is responsible for murdering three members of the Haynes family last month. 16-year-old Alec Devin Kreider is being charged with three counts of criminal homicide for the deaths of 50-year-old Thomas Haynes, 47-year-old Lisa Haynes, and 16-year-old Kevin Haynes. He was arrested today. Alec Kreider was actually friends with Kevin Haynes. Police say Alec's father contacted police on Thursday and told them that his son admitted to him that he went into the Haynes home on Peach Lane last month with the intention to smother Kevin Haynes, but instead he used a knife to kill Kevin and his parents. Daughter Maggie Haynes was the only survivor and went to get help. Now, police say they have Maggie recovered Haynes. evidence from the scene, but they are not saying what a possible motive is in this case. This was not a random act, and the Commonwealth will be seeking a conviction of first-degree murder in this particular case. That carries with it an automatic sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Kreider was taken to the Lancaster County Prison from here, from the police station, about 30 minutes ago. He will be held without bail. His preliminary hearing is scheduled for June 20th. Caitlin, it's important to mention that police say there will be no other arrests in this case. Back to you. Wow, thanks, Amy. Well, as Amy mentioned, Alec Kreider was a student at Mannheim Township High School. The school released a statement today that reads, in part, this is a difficult time for our district. Please continue to, to support one another and keep our community in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you very much. You can read the entire statement on our website, WGAL.com. We also have video from the press conference on the main window of our website, WGAL.com. We will also have team coverage of the arrests coming up tonight on News 8 at 11. Harrisburg police have one suspect. There is only one phrase to describe this. It will scrape some old wounds on this side of your TV. And if you were on that side of it watching this channel in 1998, it may scrape some old wounds for you, too. But we got to call them as we see them, so let's get it over with and christen this era for what it truly is. This is an MSNBC special. White House in crisis. Here is Keith Olbermann. For more now on the legal scandals that have the Bush White House in crisis, we're fortunate enough to be joined again by Nixon White House counsel John Dean, now, of course, our author of Worse Than Watergate and Conservatives Without Conscience, as well as a columnist for FindLaw.com. John, as always, great thanks for your time tonight. Good evening, Keith. Does the Solicitor General from the Justice Department have any business advising the White House on the legal basis for an executive privilege claim in the first place? That would seem to be, I don't know, the White House counsel's job? Well, it's not unusual for a White House counsel to seek the advice of the Department of Justice. In this instance, uh, the Solicitor General is really the only man standing with the Attorney General recusing himself, the Deputy Attorney General who's involved in this whole matter as well, has, has both recused himself and resigned. So there's only one person to offer the opinion, and that's the person who did uh, in the next line of succession, and the Solicitor General. But the, the Justice Department, which is supposed to enforce that <laughs> subpoena, uh, a solicitor general, even under those circumstances, who was supposed to lead an investigation, U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, who were he independent, one can infer would have been the 10th federal prosecutor to be fired. Does it not seem that the entire deck of government has been successfully stacked in this case, at least in favor of the White House? 
Well, I think that's a fairly accurate description of it. Uh, we've been here before. Uh, we have a basically flawed law when you have this situation because the Congress cannot necessarily insist that the Department of Justice go forward and prosecute a contempt citation that they send down to the Department of Justice or to the U.S. Attorney of the District of Columbia. Uh, it's a flawed law and it needs correction and the only way it can be solved is really through political pressure. If it's up to uh, justice to enforce they those subpoenas, the scene, huh? is there like recourse that. for Congress if the Justice Department Philly, fails to act, uh, short of, of changing the laws? What could lawmakers do next, if anything? I think the only thing option really available for Congress is to insist upon calling for a special counsel. Now, only the Attorney General or the next in succession, in this Not instance, the dollars. Solicitor General, could appoint that. Uh, special counsel, and he's not very likely to do that either. So, as I say, it really comes down to pretty much a fight, a uh, political fight, where the Congress has got to educate the American public about what this White House is doing, why they're doing it, and how they're doing it, uh, because I think the public would find it intolerable. Solicitor generals and special prosecutors, they don't, in our history, they don't tend to appoint them, they tend to uh, dismiss them, as I recall from a Mr. Pork and a Mr. Cox, but uh, give, me, give me the larger picture here, John. If, if this does not now qualify as a White House, not necessarily in you know broad, easily discerned scandal, but a White House in crisis, uh, what would? I mean, if in the last administration the term came to be used in reference to an extramarital affair, surely some sort of watershed has been reached tonight with this White House, has it not? Well, I think both uh, Senators Leahy and Schumer have accurately called it uh, a sort of an Exonian stonewalling. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience, Keith, Thomas. that you only go into this stance and this crouch, if you will, and into the bunker She's when you've got something percent. worth hiding. So they clearly have some problems down there, and uh, the Congress is after it. They're on it. They've, they're in deep trouble over what they've done to the Department of Justice, making it a political extension of the White House. Uh, they've tainted some prosecutions, and I don't think we've heard the end of this, uh, and it's going to be an ongoing story. And, and the, uh, the, the polls have shifted to some degree. In, in light of everything we learned about, about uh, Dick Cheney this week, the conservative constitutional scholar Bruce Fine, who was on this named program nine years ago, uh, former associate deputy attorney general in the Reagan administration, is now arguing that Vice President Cheney ought to be impeached. Does he have a compelling case if things progress that far? I think he does. I think he has a very strong case. Uh, whether the Congress is likely to do it or not is another question, but when you compare the trumped-up charges that were designed to attack Bill Clinton as opposed to the legitimate complaints that now exist against this uh, administration, and particularly the vice president, and who is acting way beyond the bounds of accountability, uh, there is good reason to start an investigation, at least to examine it. Uh, I would hope that the speaker uh, would reconsider her position on impeachment and might look first at Dick Cheney. John Dean, former legal counsel to President Nixon, now veteran of MSNBC's White House in Crisis and the new son of White House in Crisis. This is where we came in. Great thanks for your time as always, John. Thank you, Keith. We gave its count and amount each night. Tonight, for the first time, somebody at the White House acknowledges just how bad an idea that banner really was. And can we actually...